how do we explain to our children that um, singing or music specifically is how? Bismillah mm. alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. It's a very, very good question and it's an important one. So how do we explain to our children that music is haram? So this has a two-part answer. Or three parts. The first one is you need to bring the dalil, the evidence that music is haram. And among the evidence is the ayah regarding the people who they purchase lahw al hadith. Liyudilla an sabilillah and misguide the people from the path of Allah. This uh, ayah, and if I'm not mistaken, the beginning of Surah Luqman, this ayah is one of the many evidences. That, that music is haram. And likewise, the hadith that Imam al-Bukhari, he, he narrated ta'liqan and without the full chain. And the hadith is sahih, is authentic regarding the prohibition or that there will be some people in my ummah who will declare various things among them, silk and alcohol, uh, and musical instruments to be halal. <coughs> so when we bring the evidence... What's the next thing? That's point number one. We've, we got to bring them evidence. There's no point in us telling them it's haram. Why is it haram? Allah And you know, we have to bring them the evidence. The second thing is we have to educate them that everything that Allah made haram has a wisdom. Hikmatun baligah. An immense wisdom. And that the most important thing in recognizing any wisdom of why Allah made something haram is you recognize that anything that Allah made haram has to be bad for you. Whether you understand the wisdom or you don't understand it, but you have to understand that if Allah made it haram, that should be enough for you. Because there are some things where explaining the wisdom is not easy. Music is not too bad, it's quite easy. But there are some things where it's not easy to explain the wisdom. Why do you, mom, why do we pray dhuhr four rakaat? Why do we make tawaf seven times around the Kaaba? There are a lot of things that you find difficult to explain the wisdom behind it. And some of the scholars say that these are umur, they don't have like a, a wisdom that is known by us. Like it's just to test your worship of Allah. But the point is that get our kids away from, uh, I have to give you, you have to give me a reason. The reason is Allah made it haram. Now, I'm not saying that's the only reason, but it's important. Why? Because a misconception that we ourselves put into people. That if I can't explain to you why it's haram, go ahead and do it. And that's the wrong approach for a Muslim. The approach for a Muslim is, if Allah made it haram, and you've got a dalil that it's haram, you know for a fact it's haram for a good reason. Because you know that Allah doesn't make anything haram for no reason. Allah doesn't do anything out of abath, just like playing around and joking around and messing around. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every one of his, his, one of the names is Al-Hakim, every one of his rulings is full of wisdom. Then the third thing is, research some of the wisdom. And I say some of the wisdom, not all of the wisdom, because all of the wisdom, you, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a complete picture of all of the wisdom in his, his rulings. But research some of the wisdom as to why music is haram. And there is, I think there's a book, and if I'm not mistaken, and you can research the title because I, I'm not, I don't, I don't really, I'm not very good with English books, but it's, it's called something like The Music Made Me Do It. But you can search, it, it has in it a discussion of some of the wisdom, some of the wisdom behind the prohibition of music. And you start researching these things, then you go to your kids with three things. You go to them, number one, with the dalil. And you convince them of the dalil. Number two, you bring them the fact that Allah knows best and everything Allah made haram is for a benefit and a wisdom. And number three, you research some of that wisdom and you put it in front of them as well. You say some of the things that I recognize, but I'm not going to say everything, but some of the things we recognize is one, two, three, four, five. One of the things that I draw people's attention to, it's only some of the things. Number one, the way that music affects your emotions and makes you want to do things. Simple evidence for that. How many people heard someone say about going to the gym that I've got to have the right track on to get me motivated? 
Yeah, so music can motivate you, can make you feel sad, can make you want to go out and do something haram, it can make you changes the way you feel about things. Number two, it takes you away from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Has anyone ever been listening to the tracks and they've been, you know, getting into the music and then they think, oh, you know, it's time for me to pray. Allahu Akbar. When the music is on, you can't even pray. Like when there's music on, like sometimes when you're outside, you want to pray, you're looking for a place that doesn't have music. Why? Because you know that music and prayer don't go together. Likewise, the fact that it takes you away from the Qur'an, and some of the scholars, they said music and the Qur'an, they can't exist in the heart of the same person. Either your heart, it's only got a certain amount of space. Either you fill it with music, you fill it with the Qur'an. And one of the things that I particularly want to highlight are the lyrics of music. Lately, Allah, there's some, you know, especially when you, you know, when you look at these lyrics without the music, because I don't say listen to the music, no. But sometimes you look at the lyrics of modern, popular music, without the music, just the words written down. And you think, why is this what people listen to? And some of the most evil, evil, evil things that you can imagine in normal songs that people listen to. The worst kind of any zina, of the worst kind of killing, of er so many things are coming in uh, rela haram relationships, disbelief in Allah, so many things are coming inside of these lyrics. Inside these lyrics. And the fifth one I'm going to mention, these are just some of the wisdom. Wallahi, one of the things I have personally noticed is that, for example, the videos that accompany music today have become so bad that, wallahi, it's like, you know, we went into a hotel and the hotel had a music channel on. And you just walked in and, wallahi, you would have thought that they were putting some kind of adult channel, like something that, it, like, this is not allowed for people under 18 to even watch in this country. You don't even know where to put your eyes. And this is a regular music video that is open to children. And it's full of wallahi things that when I was young, they would not have allowed that to be shown on TV without you putting your credit card in to prove that you're 18 years old. It's disgusting the stuff that they put in music videos. And this is, you know, becoming the norm. We hear from people saying, this is the norm now. Like even the simple music videos that are regular, like people watch and children, little girls listen to. And the videos are, wallahi, so khabith. And that just shows you, what I mean by that is not that, oh, well, we'll just switch the videos and listen to the music. But what I mean by that is, what good can there be in something that brings a video like that? What does it show you? It shows you that the music itself is evil because it brings about evil. And then on top of that also, music, the addictive nature of it. You know, you can't get music out of your head. It's really annoying, you know, when something's just going around your head again and again and again. That addictive nature to it as well. So these are just some of the wisdoms, but wallah, there's many more. Like, you could write a book on it. And probably books have been written, like I said, there's a book called The Music. I'm, thinking, I'm sure it's called The Music, maybe you do it, something like that. But wallah, it's very, very, like, it's a very big topic. But always bring your kid three things. Deleen, the fact that Allah knows best, and everything Allah made haram is for a wisdom. And then bring them some of the wisdoms. If you just bring them some of the wisdom, they turn around and say, ah, well, I don't watch the music videos, I don't listen to bad lyrics, I don't, and they make their way around it and out of it. But once you tell them that Allah made it haram and Allah knows best, they can't wriggle out of that after that and then do it another way. And then you show them some of the wisdom, and the person, inshallah, will replace it with the Qur'an. And not be fooled also by the... People who come with music and they put Islamic lyrics and they tell people that these are anashid also. I shouldn't be confused by that. There are some anashid which are anashid, anashid like poetry and stuff. But a lot of the these days you get anashid, they have like a boy band. They have five guys with microphones and they're swaying and they have back backing dancers and they have background singers and they hold your hand and they sing about Allah. Wallahi, no difference between this and between the music, the other rest of the music. Wallahi. Or inshad, which is reciting poetry in a beautiful voice, there's nothing wrong with that. The Prophet ﷺ allowed inshad al shi'r, he allowed the people to recite poetry in a nice voice. But when you've got a boy band that have five guys and they're all dolled up, and he takes their little hijab, his hand in the first row, and he kneels down and he sings a love song to her, and then he talks about Allah, that person at the end of the day, that's not an ashid, even if he calls it an ashid. This is just music with the Islamic any twist on it. And I love Mr. Allah knows best.